Hey guys, System Air, and this is all the mod 7 to this guy. Hope you're all having a great day. I myself, absolutely fantastic one. Just a really good day. It's fall. I love the fall. The fall is the best time of the year. And uh, I, I just love it. It's just it's just great for me. It's just so much more comfortable. But anyway, what we're going to do is go ahead and jump into the pack here. And uh, kind of get it going. Just kind of get pushed forward here. Have not done too much in between episodes. One thing here was I updated the pack. And now when you click on this button here, the search settings, actually brings up a menu here. You can actually set the sync with JEI. So if I want to go ahead and uh, grab for, I guess, chess now, it searches here and over there. Oh, I have tooltips on. I don't want that one. Remember last search. Search in tooltips? Why is it bringing up tooltips? I thought I would just turn that off. I guess I'll live with that. Either way, it has JEI sync, and that's really what I wanted. It just makes your life a lot easier when you're working with uh, JEI. Also, they made it so it doesn't overlap as well anymore. That's actually really good, too. Anyway, what we're going to do is go ahead and work towards uh, compacting our materials over here. So I have our chest kind of ready to go. They're all filled up. I guess they're backed up for the most part. And uh, we're getting no benefit from the sifting setups right now because I'm not automatically pulling this stuff in. We need to fix that. So the way we're going to do that is uh, with these uh, laser nodes here. Go ahead and uh, pull up them down. Already set up most of the cards too. And I also have some ender chest. We're using the ender chest to pull the items from our setup here into our controller. That's kind of the main kind of kind of take away from this. So that's going to be the way that works. You can also dye these and have different ones of these, uh, different ender chests set up to different channels just by dyeing the little buttons on the top there, right? So really useful. Have a bunch of cards here. I think I have them all set up. We'll kind of see if I do or not. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, see if that works out. I have, uh, I guess, one that's going to go in the top of each, right? So oh, don't do that. One of each, right? So I have this one and this one. Basically the same thing. They're just extracts. Uh, one's on a white channel. One's on an orange because I want to send different stuff to different things. We're going to filter these on the inputs because, uh, honestly, we're going to have less inputs than, ex uh, I guess, uh, extracts. So just a shorter list there. I do have these here, too, these basic filters. So you kind of open up here. You can kind of filter these really easily just with JEI. Like, I put that in there if I wanted, which is fantastic. It also filters the entire stack at a time. So you don't have to set up each filter individually, which is really nice. Anyway, in here, on the... Which one do I want to do? Actually, none of those. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the chest first, right? So I guess the first thing we'll do is move these items here, like the non-pieces, into the ender chest. Because that's going to end up where they go. And then straight into the, uh, the drawer system, right? So what we'll do is uh, hunt down our card holder. I think it's this card here, right? This one? Oh, I need to turn that off for a second. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Chris, grab you. And grab you. And I guess I need to filter that. throw a filter in there. Then we'll go to the correct side of this node here. So that's the east. Pop that there. Then once I go ahead and do that, it should actually start working. Oh, I have to switch it. So by default, I think they're on allow. We actually want this one on deny. And with deny, it's just going to make it so it blocks all those pieces, right? So works out really well. And that's already the first part. So I'll have to hook that up. It won't go anywhere right now, but we'll deal with that in a second here. The main thing was to make sure the pieces don't go in there, right? So that is good. Next thing I want to do is grab some of these here. These are just the flux compactors. Just a really cheap recipe. Also, I'll be moving this whole setup. So don't mind what it looks like. I'll make it pretty later on. But I'll probably do that in my own time. Anyway, go ahead and do that. Do this here. Go ahead and grab ourselves a pipe wrench. The main thing is just getting your filtering set up, right? Anyway, we're going to power these machines just like that. They're going to end up with these uh, diamond upgrades as well. Actually, we're just going to put one and uh, kind of each here. Going with the diamond too, because we have so many of the uh, the sieves we're working with. So I need these to be faster, right? And these will be able to do 16 per cycle. And I think that should be able to keep up when it's done. Actually, should be fine. Because this one's 80 ticks. And what's this? 160 with the current upgrades in those ones. So should be able to keep up. No problem. Although it's probably going to uh, drain our power. These things are actually power heavy. Uh, once we've done that though, I guess we need to set the inserts on these here. Probably should go ahead and uh, turn on our jetpack though and come down here for this one. I guess we just need to access this side right here. And we're going to want inserts on these ones as well. And that's what these orange ones are for. So let's go ahead and grab them. Want to go ahead and get filters in these ones. These ones I shouldn't have to change either. It should be just allows, right? So there you go. And this one as well. They're on allow. I think so. Then we should be able to just right click the correct side here. There you go. And that should start moving pieces in there, hopefully. Oh, I haven't linked them up yet. Let's go ahead and link up all the uh, laser nodes here. Helps if they're actually on a network. <laughs> Won't do much of anything without a network here. Cool. And there you go. It's actually starting to move all the pieces. And that's fantastic, right? So don't have to worry about that. 
everything's taken care of, and everything's good in the world. And uh, yeah, that should effectively take care of that. These things have a little weird functionality too. You have to output out the bottom. I kind of forgot about that too. Go ahead and grab our barrels. There you go. And that should output the chunks down here. And basically we just need to move the chunks into the enter chest now and we are uh, effectively almost done. So you can see it's actually not that big a deal as long as you kind of plan it out here. Uh, probably do it from the behind because uh, that would be probably the shortest route here. No point to use the laser nodes here either. So no point to have another node. Uh, please get out of here. <laughs> go sweet let's set some extracts good there i think i got some upgrades for these two so let's do that that there and that should if i pull these out actually i'd have to pull a bunch out yeah it's actually getting the chunks there so everything's working just fine and the last thing we probably want to do well it's not the last thing i'll have to throw in some overclockers and stuff is run over here grab ourselves a ender chest this is our controller the back of it here let's go ahead uh, pump that there Go ahead and grab ourselves a pipe wrench. Just do that. And then go ahead and throw an upgrade in. And now those things should start going into the system pretty quick. I may need a better upgrade than that though. Let's go ahead and head in here for a second and maybe grab ourselves the next tier. And then it should be able to keep up. No problem, actually. Let's do you. Let's do that. Go ahead and do that there. There we go. That should handle it much better. We may have to go up to the ultimate tier at some point, but, uh, you can see here, it's actually going to get caught up here. You can also see how fast everything's moving in there. So we will let this thing run for a few minutes here. It's actually killing our power, which isn't that big a deal because uh, we'll have power really soon. I had to go ahead and throw a upgrade into the uh, pipe there, right? To uh, give this more power because I wasn't feeding it enough power. I think it'll be okay after it's all caught up though. So it's almost at the point where it's uh, caught up, which is not too bad. After that point, I think our power will be able to keep up. Although it doesn't matter too much because we're going to jump straight into bigger reactors, right? Also, I've been watching this ender chest just to make sure. I always keep one of these chests actually near my inventory system. Just so I can look at it and go, oh, I got to go downstairs and throw a drawer upgrade into one of our functional storage there. So actually it works out really well. But basically what I'm trying to say, this is working. It's perfect. It's fantastic. It's a little power hungry, but uh, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, I guess max out of power here in a second. I'll go ahead and do a bunch of crafting, probably right now, for bigger reactors. Because this is what we're going to set up here. We're also going to use computer craft, because, well, computer craft's awesome. And I really like it. But uh, we have to go ahead and smelt down a whole bunch of graphite. So I'm kind of waiting to see if I have power to do that here in a second. Otherwise, I'm going to have to draw, uh, break this for a little bit. And then kind of come back. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a whole bunch of smelting, a whole bunch of crafting. And uh, we'll get into power. Actually, before we go, I want to show you this, too. You can just actually kind of ponder here. This is kind of what we're going into. They have this all set up for Ponder, and they did a really good job on it. So, yeah, it shows you kind of the reactor there. Then you add your fuel rods. You don't have to have reactor glass. And you have the control rod. It's just really cool. And then it shows you where everything goes. Just really, really good. I love Ponder. It is just so fantastic. Like, look at that thing. Just so rad all around. So our reactor is all set up. It's ready to go and I'm uh, pretty pumped for this. So we have ourselves the reactor. It's a seven by seven by eight, I think is what I went with. We have the reactor computer port. Now you don't need this to form the multi-block, but uh, I have it here because we're going to be using computer craft to automate this thing. But we have a reactor terminal. You will need that. You need a whole bunch of casings. Also the ports and stuff like that can't go on the edges. They have to be on a internal kind of block there. But I have the reactor power tap. That'll be where power comes out. I should probably go ahead and uh, get that hooked up right away. We should get our drawers in here real quick too. So anyway, the program I'm going to be using too for computer craft was made by, I found it on a YouTube channel. What was it? Uh, Wolf1569. I'll link the video that I found it from um, down in the comments as well as the commands we're going to use. There's only two of them though. So that should uh, be fine. 
Go ahead and grab that right there. Let's go ahead and put that in there. That's going to fill up the reactor with fuel. That's what we want. We will have to set up auto smelting, which uh, after we have this power, we'll probably go ahead and do anyway, right? So it is uh, probably the next step anyway. But we look in here, we're now full of fuel, which is kind of what we want here. Has like uh, the temperature and Kelvin and stuff like that. Reactivity, the more reactive it is, the more uh, power you're producing per like millibucket of uh, uranium and stuff. How much RF tick. Has heat there. The heat doesn't matter too much. Just higher is better basically for power. Lower is better for efficiency. And uh, yeah, the one thing about this reactor, and the main reason we're using the program too, is when it's on, when the power buffer is filled, right, and you're not pulling the power, it doesn't automatically turn off. So this is going to be a program that kind of throttles it for us, which is actually really awesome. And we'll show the top here, just so people know how this built here. But anyway, go ahead and break that and that. There you go. So on the top of here, these fuel rods, they go all the way down to the bottom. This is where the uranium went, right? So it's actually in there. You can see there it's in a liquid form. Then in between the blocks, I have graphite. Now you can put different blocks in here, like diamond, gold, stuff like that. It'll make the reactor more efficient, but these will actually make it produce more power because it makes it more reactive. It's kind of the whole point of the block, right? I don't know if liquids are currently working. The last time I used this uh, mod, the liquids, they used to be able to use liquid coolants, like uh, it was like enderium and stuff, it was like a really good coolant at one point. So it was uh, the other thermal one. That's super cold one, I forget what it's called. It was insanely good for it, it made it insanely efficient. But uh, yeah, I don't know if they're working yet. So anyway, I just went with the graphite because it's super cheap. It's just uh, smoked down charcoal, basically. So anyway, let's go ahead and grab this stuff. We'll go ahead and get this thing hooked up here. Apparently, I didn't grab enough monitors either. We actually need nine of them. So let's do that. Go ahead and uh, put three by three of them right here. This is going to be our screen. It's going to be where we actually control the reactor from. Then we're going to want a modem here, computer here, modem there, and then two cables. And once that's hooked up, you just want to right-click each one of the modems. Effectively, we're ready to go ahead and install our program there. So anyway, let's go in here. I'm going to just paste a little command here. Oh, this will be what I put down in the comments. So paste bin, get that little string, then install. So we'll go ahead and hit that. It's going to download the program. Then we go to uh, paste bin. I believe it's run. And then that string again. And now that it's on screen, I don't have to worry about it. 1K, 5VG. I think that's right. It's also case sensitive, so make sure you're right. Once you've done that, the program will load up. It says, would you like to install our update? We're gonna install the reactor control. Turbine control doesn't currently work, so don't try to use it on your turbine, apparently. At least that's what I said in the video. So let's go ahead and do that. Sweet. It's gonna download everything, get all set up. Hit enter to reboot. Then it's gonna set up our perif peripherals, which are the motors and the uh, computer and stuff, right? So it hit enter when ready. Search for peripherals. There you go. Everything is hooked up. And it looks like we're good to go. That's actually it. Oh, I can read his name too there. Wolf1569 Games. There you go. By Jar Anvil, aka Jared314. So pretty cool and pretty rad. And this is going to be how we kind of control a reactor. Notice right there it says auto power disabled. And um, yeah, this is going to be this is gonna be good. So let's go ahead and uh, fly up here for a second. We have a bunch of buttons up here. So there's power on, off, auto. So you can just turn it on and off here if you wanted to. You could also do the control rods. Control rods are basically, you can install, insert the control rods to make it so, like if I insert them 20%, it only try to burn 80% of the available fuel per tick, right? Out of the max that it can burn per tick. So it's a way of kind of tweaking the efficiency of the reactor. So that is really good. I haven't tried out the auto on this. I may try out the auto on this, but uh, haven't tried that out yet. And then over here, updates and stuff. I think if you check for updates by default, it tries to install the same update. So I'm not going to do that. So with the most current one, so we'll just install the one we just installed, right? The main thing I want it for is this here, the auto. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, click enable. Then it'll say on when stored. So I'm gonna set this up to a number. I'm gonna set it to about 30%, I think. So when the fuel in the reactor is under 30%, the reactor is gonna turn on. And this one here, we're gonna set it probably to about 80%. So we'll go to 80% on that one. So when it gets over 80% in the buffer, it's going to turn off. And that's effectively how we're going to control a reactor. Now there's a redstone port where you could kind of do this with some redstone settings, but I like the program. This is just cool, uh, coolness swag factor, right? This is just really rad here. So anyway, let's go ahead and click that. It's gonna turn on. The fuel temp's gonna start going up there. We can actually see our power per tick. We're up to about 36,000 off the current size of the reactor. Kind of curious about how much fuel we're burning. Four millibuckets a tick actually isn't too bad at all. We should be able to keep up to that. No problem whatsoever. And uh, I want to see if it turns off here. 
So you see here the FE stored. When that hits 80, this thing should turn off. And if so, it's working just perfectly. There you go. And the reason I set the 80 is because even though it's off, it still continues to produce a little bit of power for a while. It might be, yeah, I might want to put that a little higher. I'd like to get it close to 100% there. Maybe like uh, 84, 85. Actually, it's pretty close. Yeah, are you going to hit 100%? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe like 81, 82%. It'd be at 100% by the time it turned off. So anyway, super cool, super awesome. That's going to be how we run our reactor. And uh, one thing to notice too, you notice that the fuel says 99%. It's not because we don't have uranium. It's just that uh, it only can insert, uh, I think it's 100, I think it needs a room for 144 millipockets before I can put a new agate in. It's basically how that works. So anyway, really, really cool. And I was pretty pumped to find this uh, program. I think it's actually a really sweet one. I've been looking for one for the current version. And I tried to find one not too long ago. Couldn't get one to run properly. But this one's actually running really good. Really good. I like this. This is good stuff. How much is the buffer on the power on this too? 21 million battery just here too. So that actually works out. You're being creepy and annoying. You, do you want to find the end of a netherite sword? Because uh, yeah, it's definitely going to happen here. So yeah, we now have power. We got uh, full-on power. It looks like about 36,000 RF. And I can increase the size of this too. I don't know what the max size is these days. Like there's been so many variations of this mod. But you used to be able to build them super big. We won't have any need for that. But uh, this is uh, this is cool. I love this program. It's total swag. I do want a full round control rod. So I'll have to do that at some point. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure how this one works. I don't think it mentioned this in the video either. Because usually, actually, I want to try the full rod, the, the rods anyway, control rods. If I go to enable, oh, you can set up to a target FE a tick. And did all, oh, I see what he's doing there. Okay. Anyway, I want to do the control rods real quick to see if I could tweak the efficiency a little bit. Actually, I'll have to wait until our power is being drained. We'll worry about that later. But uh, usually you can insert the tool rods about 20% or so. And you'll get a massive boost in efficiency and barely lose any power. So probably be something I end up doing. But I need pull before I can actually see that. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, work on auto processing materials. Because I need to be able to get uh, uranium automatically in there. Plus, I just want to have everything in negative form. So we're going to go ahead and automate the uh, processing materials here. I'll grab the wrong kind of wool too. If you grab the wrong kind of wool, when you actually make these two, it actually uh, it dyes it wrong. <laughs> let's go for, uh, I think I should have some white dye in here. There you go. Let this go. Yeah, it's all light gray. I want to make sure that's white, white, white. It's going to be on our main channel. I need to throw some upgrades into the uh, rose quartz there, I noticed. But it's part of the reason I keep these chests around anyway. So let's do that. We're going to want uh, some acceleration cards. So let's go ahead and hopefully get a few of those. There you go. Oh, drop you in there. Grab the actual accelerations. Probably only need like four right now. Then we'll also need some of these uh, capacity cards as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Probably need four of those as well. Uh, I said four system. There you go. And then we want the export bus. So the ME export bus. And uh, we'll want two of these. And with this and a netherite furnace, we should be able to uh, set up auto smelting for, uh, I guess, almost everything, right? So I guess, well, everything that's coming in in chunks. So it should work very well. I'm going to do a little temporary setup too. Um, probably just do it down here, actually, for now. Because I haven't really switched over my cabling. I want to get over to dense cabling. But once I have everything kind of set up, it'll be easy to move either way. So anyway, what we'll do is uh, grab a netherite furnace. So let's go ahead and hunt down one of them. I don't need hover on right now. Totally derpy. Also, this thing's totally backed up. So let's do that. The reason I have that one backed up, not doing the in and out too, is the iron. Actually has uh, a double smelt recipe in this. So it ends up turning into like weird plates for the uh, IC2 variant. I guess uh, the FTB one. So yeah, I don't want to end up with plates like that because uh, we kind of don't need them. There you go. Go ahead and uh, head downstairs here. Don't even think I'll need the speed upgrades. I find the speed upgrades are just, they're just, they add too much power. <laughs> they just make them use too much power for no apparent reason. Anyway, it's going to look a little dorky right now down here. But it's the same thing, like I said, this is temporary until I work on our platforms and expand our, our base a little bit. So anyway, do that. Got to make sure we have our augment factory in there. Then we're going to want some cable. Cable's kind of important. Let's do that right there. Do this and that. Then all I'm going to do is, uh, I guess, filter these, right? So these things only have one filter spot by default, but you can put two uh, capacity cards in them. So that's how that's done. Then we go ahead and speed them up with the acceleration. They're just going to export items into here. So 
should be uh, pretty simple to do. How many chunks do I have? I need to get these organized properly too. Uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So let's do 6. Yeah, we'll do 6 and 7 is what we'll do. Wait, anyway, let's go ahead. Hopefully we got 6 right there. That will work. Let's go ahead and uh, put those away as well. So we don't need those ones. And hopefully I'm grabbing them all. <laughs> if not, I'll see the chunks in there anyway at some point. Anyway, let's do that, 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 and that. And that should handle the exporting of the items into the furnace, right? Uh, I didn't set up the sides, so we need to go to auto input. I don't think auto input actually matters in this regard. But we want to input on this side and input on that side. And that should start bringing in the items. So that is good. I'll probably leave it not on split either. That'll probably work out for us pretty well. Actually, I'll have to see after it's running here. But uh, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, put stuff away, please. Okay. Then I guess after this, all we need to do is uh, importing the items. So I'm just going to use an enter chest. So I'm just going to do it to the front. Then we'll just go to the side here, front. And we'll go to um, output, right? And then we want auto put on. That should work. This should work. We'll kind of test this out here. Yeah, so we just need power. So... Like I said, it's going to look real jank, but this thing's going to be super fast and get me through all my backlog of these uh, ores here. That's kind of the plan, right? I just want to get through this backlog as quickly as possible. So there you go. It's going pretty quickly. Let's actually try it with this to see how... <laughs> That's so silly. It's so silly how fast that is. I don't know if it can uh, AE2 could actually get the items in there fast enough with the two capacity cards, actually. I need a faster way of moving them in there, but it doesn't really matter that much. It works out. Maybe it's better off to go with split on this one. Probably a better idea. Yeah, because there's like an operation tick delay. That works out. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Actually, this might have been faster. Yeah, I think that's better. Because, yeah, it's moving the way it's moving items. Either way, that's going to get through the entire backlog super quick. I won't really have to worry about that very long. Um, I might have to speed up the import of items, though. Unless I don't have filtering for those ones yet. That might be the actual e issue, right? I might need to cut more of the compacted drawers. Because which ones are those? Zinc. Yeah, I might not have done zinc or tin yet. Let's see this. If Do I have zinc? No zinc. No tin. So I guess I need a couple compacting drawers. Then this thing will clean up. So I think I got everything set up the way I want here. Just go ahead and uh, throw this uranium Andy here. There you go. That's awesome. Have this on a new kind of chest here. This one is uh, right in the middle. I guess I enter chest, right? It's a new channel. So that is working out for us. I got a whole bunch of new compacting doors, which is uh, working out as well. Definitely do its thing. And I think it's already done pretty much the entire backlog of uh, <laughs> ores that we had. All the ingots are actually already made. It took no time at all. I'm going to have to keep watching this chest, though, to uh, monitor what drawers are going to need uh, upgrades here. But basically all I'm doing is automatically uh, pumping out the um, uranium straight out of the drawer into a ender chest. And then, yeah, just moving it into an ender chest over there that way instead of a drawer, right? So working out really well and uh, auto smelting is uh, working out for me as well. Every once in a while too, experience flies out and hits me and uh, I hear a ding and go, where did that experience come from? Because uh, this furnace is just... Uh, pooping out experience on me so because that's something as well the last thing we're doing here is go ahead and upgrade all our armor and stuff because uh why not Let's do that i want to get one of these olimodium swords so we're gonna need uh some of these plates here uh can you just do the thing i know you got metadata but uh give me this sword this sword actually has 59 attack damage it's uh straight up op plus i think we need the all the modium pick as well so let's actually grab that right there and then we need the uh, plates as well. It's going to derp out with the thing again, but that's fine. And there you go. We've got the Olimodium pick as well. And with this, uh, we are pretty much in fine form. We actually we kind of look like a, some kind of like Greek god with that head thing. The head armor is a little strange with it, but yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty cool either way. And this stuff is insane. So piglins become neutral. No crash damage while flying with an uh, elytra and water breathing. So that's not too bad. And this stuff is uh, Piglin's Neutral. Immune to all damage sources using fire lava. This one is, uh, I guess, the Piglin's again. Piglin's. No fall damage on these ones as well. And I think we'll be able to enchant these as well. So they'll just get better and better. And like I said, 59 attack damage and 57 attack damage. So that is uh, pretty crazy. I don't know if we have enough for the axe too, actually. How much more all the modium do we have? We have nine. And how much does an axe take? 
uh, all the modium. Must well, if we, if we can afford it, two, four, oh no, we, we don't. We'll be able to get it pretty soon though. What is that, 10? We're one short, we're literally one short. I guess it doesn't matter too much, but anyway, we got a ton of that. We still have one of those Orsite potions too, so it should be actually pretty easy to find more all the modium. But uh, we need to pick to be able to get the next level. Forget what it's called, like vibranium or something. Isn't that what it's called? Or unobtainium. I forget which one's which with these things. But uh, we'll have to at some point. What is this one here? Vibranium, I guess, is the next one. So maybe we'll end up doing that. And we still have enough to go ahead and make our teleport pad anyway. So we'll end up going to the other dimension, which is the other. So anyway, pretty cool, pretty rad. And now we are completely decked out. The armor on the stuff is insane, too. Look at the armor toughness, 125. I think it's because this stuff's all indestructible. Like, this stuff can't break. So it's just straight up indestructible armor. And you don't have to worry about anything. So, yeah. And no, you're not getting knocked back at all. Look at that knockback resistance. You'd be like a brick wall. It's actually pretty fantastic all around. So, anyway. I think I'm going to go ahead and actually end this one here. We'll go ahead and wrap this one up. Come back in the next video. I need to kind of figure out what we're going to do for progress. Because, uh... This pack is almost like a choose your own adventure. You need to kind of figure out which route you want to take because there's so many routes that you could take. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this one here. So as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. Well, you guys all have a good one. See you guys in the next video. Later.